hypothetical zero down deals. Uh, this is part five of a six part series. Uh, and uh, we explore uh, different types of deals that you can do using the zero down structure hierarchy that I teach uh, to my mentor students. Uh, this was done in a classroom, uh, Zoom classroom with my group. Uh, and we went into great detail uh, about how to put these types of deals together and all the different ways uh, that you can do it. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the like button. Uh, I'd appreciate it. You recognize this stuff. So we're going to be looking at subject two, uh, multi-mortgage, land contract, lease option, assignable cash deals. And we want to look at this particular um, arrangement, this hypothetical deal and decide you know, if we can do these deals in these ways. So if we're looking at this particular deal with the asking price of $25,000, it needs, uh, it's in poor condition, it needs a lot of repairs, $25,000 worth of repair. But after repair, it's gonna be worth $85,000. It doesn't have any mortgage on it right now, and it has potential rental income of $800 a month. Can we do a subject two on a property like this? No. That's correct. There's no mortgage. No right. mortgage. Okay, so good. So can't do a subject two on it. Could we do a multi-mortgage or a variation of a multi-mortgage on this? No. Could we, get, could, could we get them to give us the deed? Yeah, they, they don't own anything. So you own it outright. Yeah, so if they gave us the deed on the property uh, and then a mortgage on that property, let's say we pay them and we're the borrower, they're the lender, and we make payments to them on this $25,000. So that would, that, that would be technically be a multi-mortgage, even though it's even a single, single mortgage. There's no existing mortgage on it, but it's still transferring the deed and us paying for the equity uh, with a mortgage. And creating a mortgage, right? Exactly. Creating a new mortgage uh, between uh, us, the buyer, and the seller. And we'll, we'll owe the seller. We're not qualifying for this mortgage. We're not getting a loan from a bank. All we're doing is creating this mortgage and making payments to them. And we're going to try to make the payments uh, without interest. So Making we're payments for what they owe? We're going to make... Know. They don't owe anything. They want $25,000 for the property. Okay, so we, we pay them such and such money per month until we pay out the 25,000. Right. Um, so so how, what, how would we determine how much money to pay them per month? The lease, how long it's gonna be, and then how many years, right? Well, you gotta back into it. Mm -hmm. We're going to set the price because we're making the rules on the loan, right? Yeah. It's not like we're going to a bank and they're making the rules. We're making the rules because we're making an offer. Mm -hmm. So we're going to back into the price based on this $800 a month. Okay. So let's say we've got $800 a month of income on this property. That's what we think we're going to be able to get on it once the work is done. We also know that it's got $50 a month taxes and $50 a month. Uh, of um, insurance. So $100 a month on that. So that's, uh, that leaves us with $700. And we want to make sure we have positive cash flow. So $200 a month positive cash flow. That means theoretically, we could pay them $500 a month uh, towards this $25,000. See how I backed into that and still left myself cash flow, taxes, and insurance. And now, is that where you land on the, uh, or do you even go a little bit lower? Well, we, we try to go lower. Well, I mean, with Daniel on a property like this, we get it for $200 a month. So but, what, but I'm saying, what's the maximum that we could pay if we, if we wanted to and still make it worthwhile? We want to we wanna build in enough profit to make it worthwhile uh, in, this, in this deal. So the first 50 represent from the 800 was what? Taxes or something? Taxes and insurance. So yes. 50, taxes, for taxes. 50 for taxes, 50 for insurance, mm -hmm. and 200 for cash flow. 
So $300. So who does the cash flow go to? You. Okay. And then the 500 is what we pay. And, and it probably won't be $200 in cash flow. It'll probably, I mean, taxes will go up. Um, you know, repairs will be needed. Vacancies will happen. Property management costs will happen. So you, what I'm doing is building in a cushion so that you can get close at least to break even. You won't have to be negative cash flow on this property. Okay. So that, so if you have $500, the way you would figure that is you take that $25,000 and divide it by 500 and that gives you 50 months so you divide that by 12 that's a little over four years 4.4.2 years yeah. and that's so 50, 50 month 50 payments of 500 dollars is what we're what we would be offering them mm -hmm. and uh, that would so pay the max right that would be the maximum that you'd want to want to offer them it, it depends because th this property has some equity in it, right? <clears throat> this property looks like it's going to be worth $85,000, but it also needs a lot of repairs. So you're going to have to come up with $25,000 to fix it up, or you're going to have to sell it on a land contract. If you, if you, if you come up with a $25,000, that's your best case scenario because now you're going to get... Uh, uh, you know, the $500 goes towards your 25 every month, your taxes and insurance, $200 goes towards the other 25. So it's going to take, uh, you know, closer to seven or eight years to get your $25,000 back unless you sell this property uh, and cash out of it. So it'll take longer because you have to get your investment money back, but it's still going to be a good deal for you. Uh, it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to be a really sweet deal because all that money is going towards principal every month and you're going to be buying that down every month. Right. And as soon, as soon as that, you know, that uh, 50 months goes by, then the rest of that $25,000 is going to be paid off pretty quickly. You're already going to pay down half of that by that period of time. And then the other half will be paid off within probably a year, a year and a half. So within five years, this whole thing is paid for and you have an $85,000 asset that's bringing you in $800 a month and uh, essentially $700 a month in cash flow. So that's a, that's a really nice return on money, on your money. Now, let's say you don't have the $25,000 to, uh, to do the rehab. What, what can you do with this particular deal? You, you've still got the deal. You got the 500 a month going out. You got the uh, you got a property that's in bad condition that needs twenty five thousand dollars repair, um, and somebody wants to buy it from you. How would you sell it? An assignable cash deal, wholesale. You could wholesale it, um, but you're leaving a lot of money on the table by doing that because you got this the interest free loan. You know, and you're, you know, you've got cash flow. So there's, there's a better way. That the land you could just Because you just assign this for five grand, you could probably get five grand out of it and get in and out of it and you're done. But, but since you, since you structured this monthly payment, it makes it even more valuable because whoever takes it over is going to do well. So who said land contract? I did. That's Jerry. Okay, that's that's the answer. Okay. So how would you structure a land contract on this, Jerry? Well, um, you, I, I don't know for sure, but I'm thinking that um, you would create, I don't know if you can do this, but you create a new mortgage for the $25,000 that you need to do the repair and and um, have that in a, a mortgage. Uh, there's, a there's a difference between a mortgage. There's a difference between a mortgage and a land contract. So Pardon you're talking. About, you're, there's a difference between a mortgage and a land contract. Okay. You don't do mortgages on land contracts. Okay. Land then contract, I, don't know how I, would, I don't know how I would do that then. A mortgage leans against a deed, so a mortgage is only if if you're doing that multi mortgage plan that we talked about. 
okay. so where they transfer the deed and, and you're the one taking the mortgage out because you're going to be making payments on that mortgage. But now that you have the deed, you can sell it on a land contract. So you're owning this property with a $25,000 mortgage that's paying off at $500 a month. Uh, and you're going to sell it on a land contract. So the question is, how much, how much can you sell it for on a land contract? How much do you think you can get for this property uh, that's worth $85,000 after you put 25 into it? After you put 25 in it, you can, you, you can get 85. And, and I'm assuming you're not putting that money into it. You're selling it as is. Okay, then you, you're selling it as allowance is. for 25, so it's $60,000. So, so you sell 90 to get 5,000. So if you, if you sold it, if you sell it for, I, I think that's the right answer, Jerry. I mean, there, there's, there's lots, it, it depends on what the buyer is willing to do. Yeah. And, and, but I think 60,000 is a fair price because basically you're selling it for full market value at $60,000 and right. the 25,000 they have to come up with. Uh, they'll have to come up with, and then their value will come up to 85,000. And that's not unusual when you're selling it on terms. If I, it's probably not going to sell to an investor that way. It's probably going to sell to an end user who wants to live there and fix it up and, and move into it. And they might be looking at it and saying, I'm going to do the work on this property, which means instead of $25,000 worth of repairs, they only need $12,000 worth of repairs because they're going to do all the labor. So they're putting in the sweat equity of the property and they're seeing, okay, if I put $12,000 in it over the next few years, I can buy this property. So the land contract is the market value? The land contract, yeah, we're going we're gonna to try to sell it for its full value minus the, the cost repair. of it to repair it. So it says $85,000 after repair. After repair. So if you subtract that 25,000 it takes to repair it. 60. That's it, puts it at 60. And you might be able to get more for it, you know? So wouldn't, you, wouldn't you say like 65 so you can get 5,000? Maybe, maybe, maybe you could get 85 for it. It kind of mm -hmm. depends on the situation, on the market, on mm -hmm. what's actually wrong with the property, on how much it's actually gonna cost to, to repair it. You know, so uh, there's a lot of variables there that you can, you can just try your luck and see, see if you can find a buyer. If you could find a buyer at 85,000 for that property uh, and at an age 25 uh, and you're transparent with the buyer and say, look, I think it's gonna cost 25 to do this. And he says, I'm okay with that because I can buy a house for myself and I could fix it up the way I want it to be fixed up. And I might be able to, to be able to get, you know, my materials, you know, really cheap. You know, might, they might fall off the truck somewhere, you know, uh, I might, I'm going to do all the work myself, you know, so they, they might be able to, 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 to do it much cheaper than that 25 because so, they have the skills to do it. So why do they call it a land contract? It, it is when there's a house on there. We're selling it on a land contract because we're not going to give them the deed. We're buying okay. it. We, we have the deed. So and you're going to charge, you're going to charge, what's that thing called? something rent land contract where they're going to they're going to buy it from us on a land contract even though we bought it we got the deed through a multi-mortgage and um we got a mortgage on there that we're making payments on so you hold the mortgage and the house and the deed and they take the land where we have a mortgage we're paying a mortgage mm -hmm. so we're not holding a mortgage what we're doing is selling it on a land contract. That's not a mortgage. All that is, is an agreement between us and the new buyer to buy it at a specific price for a specific purchase, for a specific monthly payment uh, over a certain period of time. So land doesn't mean, land contract doesn't mean just land. No, right. Right. Okay. correct. It, there's other names for land contract, land contract, contract for deed, um, uh, agreement for deed uh, is what Bill was calling it. Uh, so depending on what state you're in, 
if, if you're in a mortgage state, it's called a land contract. If you're oh. in a trust deed state like Illinois, then it's called a contract for deed. You know, California is a trust deed state, so it's contract for deed in California. Indiana is a mortgage state, so it's the land contract here. Uh, that makes more sense when you say contract for deed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think what Bill was calling it was agreement for deed. Is that what he was calling yeah. it? Yeah. So, so that that's actually um, there's clarity in that term. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's to basically I'm, I'm agreeing to uh, a, a certain agreement. As soon as I pay it off, that's when the deed is transferred. So we'll be able to we'll transfer the deed to them as soon as that's paid off. Can we, can we like recap that just briefly because. I'm still kind of not understanding how that just happened. So the so multi there's multiple multiple parts to this deal. There's the purchase part of it, and then there's the sale part of it. Mm -hmm. Because, so they, the, because your, your your purchase determines what you can sell, how you can sell it, how you how you buy determines the options you have when you try to sell. So you want to make sure you understand what your exit strategy is going to be whenever you buy a property. If you don't know your exit strategy, uh, then you're screwing it up. So make sure you understand that. So the, uh, the purchase strategy here, the, the, the purchase strategy is to buy it for $25,000 and have the seller sell it to us and deed us the property and put a new mortgage on the property that we make payments on of $500 a month and of principal only. And so we make those payments uh, until it's paid off. That's, that's our purchase. And that's separate from our sale. Now the sale is a different transaction altogether. That's between us and the new buyer. And they're gonna buy it from us, let's say on a land contract for let's say $60,000. We might be able to get more, might be able to get less, but let's say 60,000 we're able to get on it. So when we sell it on 60,000, we wanna make sure we get $800 a month income on it. So we have to figure out what the numbers are gonna to be to get us to $800 a month and preferably maybe even more than that. But let's say it's $800 a month. If we get $800 a month from, from this buyer, uh, we're gonna look at what, is it, what does it take to get $800 a month um, uh, what, what is the math that we have to do in order to get $800 a month? And um, it's going to be based on a 30-year mortgage. And we have to figure out, okay, with a 30-year mortgage on $60,000, um, what does the interest rate have to be in order to get there? So I'll play around with that number a little bit. Uh, let's say we're at 9% interest on 60,000 on a 30 year mortgage, the payment would be 479, not enough. <laughs> so I need to figure out a way to get that. You know, I have to make that interest rate higher in order to make that happen. So let's say I do a 30 year mortgage uh, with 12% interest at $60,000. And that's gonna be, $611. Now we're getting a lot closer because we got $100 in taxes and insurance. So it might even go to 14%. So let's go with 30, 30 years on 14% interest at $60,000. That puts us at $700, which is about where I want to be. So I'm, I'm going to have to go a 14% interest on this land contract uh, with a 30 year amortized loan. Uh, and they're going to pay me $700 plus they're going to pay the taxes and insurance, which is going to be another $100. So they're going to be about $800 a month. And I'm going to ask them to pay me the taxes and insurance directly because I want to make sure that it gets paid. I don't want it to get go late. So I'm going to have them pay that directly to me. So their $800 a month comes to me. And, their, and, I, and the reason I did it with interest rate uh, they, every uh, $800 they give me, I make $500 of positive cash flow uh, because 
that $500 goes towards my loan. I also make the $200 a month positive cash flow. So I'm making $700 a month positive cash flow on this property, even though I didn't put any money into it at all. And they're paying me market rent for this property and doing their own fix up. So I don't have to be responsible to uh, their condition of their property. And their mortgage is not dropping very quickly. It's gonna drop over 30 years. So over the first, if, if, they, if we do a five year balloon payment on this, which we would always do a balloon payment on a land contract. So the, we do a five year balloon payment, they have to pay us the balance off or refinance it within five years. So they'd refinance it and pay off what they owe us the balance of that thirty thousand or that sixty thousand dollars, which most of it they'd still owe. So they probably owe fifty five or six that thousand dollars. But within that period of time, also we have paid off our mortgage, so we're going to have all the money that we made in cash flow. Plus, we're going to make um, you know the, the 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 sale price of the property. This would be a really nice deal you know, for us. And it wouldn't be terrible for the buyer either. Uh, it wouldn't be bad for the seller because he gets her out of a property that he can't sell. It's not bad for the buyer because he gets into a property that he couldn't have bought otherwise because he doesn't have the credit to do it. And he doesn't need a huge amount of money for the down payment. We're gonna charge him, you know, $60,000. That means we're probably gonna get $6,000 as a down payment on this property, which will apply to his purchase price. half in cash and half with a promissory note. So maybe he has to come up with another 150 or $200 a month uh, on the promissory note. So it increases your cash flow again. What would happen if we want 25 years in a five year balloon? Wouldn't that give us more cash flow per month? Uh, it would give us more cash in our pocket per month, but it doesn't really give us more income yeah, or, or doesn't really give us more profit. And I, I think that you have to, to look at the deals and say, am I, looking, am I looking for, do I want to pay this thing off sooner or do I want the income on the property? And uh, it depends on your financial situation. Well, I'm talking about um, the buyer. Instead of giving them, a, amortizing it for 30 years, we amortize it for 25 years. So we get that payment up a little bit higher because he's going to pay it off in five years anyhow. And within four years, we'll pretty much have this property paid off. Well, he pays down. He, he's paying down the loan more when you do it that way. And, and I guess you could do it that way, but I don't see the real value in making an extra 50 bucks a month on something like that, especially if that $50 is going towards principal. Because what you're doing is changing uh, is what's going towards principal when you when you change that the term. If you you know you you don't want him to buy down the note. You want to you want it to, uh, to 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 last longer. That's how you make money because you're making money on the interest. Okay. You're making money on the interest and you're making money on the cash flow of the property. Do you think we can get more money for that property if we didn't insert a balloon payment in it? And this left it fully amortized for 30 years? No, I don't think so. You might be able to. It depends on the situation. But I, I don't think that that's going to have a big impact because people look at five years the same way they look at 30. Okay. I, you know, I don't think people look at five years and think that that's, that's coming soon, which is a mistake but that's what they do. And, and that's what they do with uh, the three-year lease option too. They look at that and say, that's, I got plenty of time, but that really goes fast. But the, the, the beauty for us, when you, when you have a three-year or five-year balloon, you don't have to kick them out at that point. You can extend their, their, their term. And that's one of the things that we probably would do uh, if they needed it. But also, if, if they don't pay it, then it puts some pressure on them and you know, makes, it, uh, it makes it more likely that we can get more cash from them. And, and one of the other things that we can do with this $25,000 mortgage that we've got, we could go to this seller in, in a year or two years and say, you know, I've got an extra $12,000 right now and I could pay off this note if you'd like me to. 
uh, you know, and, and offer them half of what they're owed because they might take the cash rather than the terms if we if we wanted to pay it off and, and we suddenly make ten thousand dollars on a deal like that if you if you have a little extra cash to spend good okay so let's let's continue with this one because we're, we're we're working through this and we did the multi-mortgage now so could we uh, sell this on a land could we buy this on a land contract we, I think we just decided that we could. Yeah, we're on lease option now. Well, we sold it on a land contract. We just did a multi-mortgage where we sold on land contract. Yeah, I guess the principle is that you never want to buy land contract. You want to sell land contract. You don't want to buy land contract, correct? Well, not necessarily. I mean, I, I would buy this on a land contract. Land contract, remember, that's the middle of the structure. So mm -hmm. you can buy and sell with a land contract. You know, when you're buying with a land contract, you want it to be fully amortized and you want to do it non-recourse. So when we buy a land contract, we always do fully amortized. We try to do zero interest and we try to do non-recourse. When I sell on a land contract and, and I record it, I record the land contract so that there's public record of it. They can't sell it out from under me. When I, when I sell on a land contract, I don't want to record it. I just want the paper to be in my hand so I can tear it up if uh, we agree that it's going to be okay to tear it up. Uh, I don't have to go through the title to try to get it cleared up. I also charge interest and I also have balloon payment. So I don't fully amortize it uh, when I sell. So there's, there's two different ways of doing land contracts. One protects you more than the other. And you want to make sure that when you're buying, you're protecting yourself. When you're selling, you're not, you're, you're protecting yourself the opposite way. Okay. So in this situation, if you're buying this $25,000 property on a land contract, uh, you, you, um, you know, you still want to do the zero interest. You want to re record it. You want uh, to have fully amortized. And now that you own it on a land contract, how are you going to sell it? So that's the, so if you fix it up though, then you're gonna sell it on a lease option. That's good. Or, or the other possibility is you just turn around and put it on the MLS and sell it. You know, if you fix it up and put a little bit of money into it, fix it up and then sell it and get all your cash back and pay it off. But then again, you're also not utilizing that zero interest loan. But it still would be profitable. Because you're you have fifty thousand dollars into it, and uh, it's going to cost you, you know, seven or eight to sell it. You know, so you got uh, what twenty five thousand dollars profit. It's not a bad deal. And can you sell this one on a you know? Can you can you buy it on a lease option? No, no. Yeah. You have to go to that because of that repair stuff. You don't want to. You want to use money to make money. Lease option, you want to do it free and clear. There's a thing called a sandwich lease, yeah. which Bill, Bill used to do, and until I talked him out of it. A sandwich lease is uh, where you lease option it, and then you have the right to release it. It's you can sublease it, and then you find a new lease option buyer for it. This one, I think, would be challenging because of the condition. You're not going to be able to lease it. But uh, but if, if it was in decent condition, you you could just do a sandwich lease on it. But I hate sandwich leases because it doesn't give you any control. And, um, you know, the lease, the lease itself, you can't record it. And uh, uh, you'd be much better off the land contract. So why not just buy it on land contract? So does that make sense to you guys? Do you understand how, how we did it on this one? Yeah, I understand. And all the reasons why? Okay. Yeah. All right. So the, the, this is the strategy that you're gonna use when you're, um, when you're trying to figure out, when, when people are telling you these numbers, you've gotta go through here and figure out what uh, what they can you know what what kind of offers you can make that are going to make it be profitable to you and uh, you know you have to look at not just the um, the purchase but also the sale because there's always an exit strategy what is your exit strategy going to be 
And that's what this part of it is down here. Are you going to hold it? You're going to flip it on terms. You're going to flip it for cash.